Hello, thank you for checking out my video today. Today's video is uh, a video about my second attempt of my V40 and memory card combined. Um, I'll go through all the parts of it and the purpose here in a minute. But uh, let me just kind of compare side to side what I'd worked on before. So this was my first attempt here. You can see I moved all the chips over. That's why it's depopulated. This is my second attempt. Um, I'm not sure why. The wiring is all the same. But my first attempt had some bugs to it. Like uh, this video would be off color. The, the key cord wouldn't work half the time. It would be jumpy. I, I'm not sure if it's because... Everything kind of squished together here and like the data and the address go through each other on the bottom here could be because the uh, The crystals up at the top away from the processor. I'm not sure but anyway with my second attempt it works uh, much better So let me just kind of uh, go to the parts real quick So what we have is our v40 processor if you don't know much about that, what it's got is a uh, 8088 in the core. Well, it's a V20 in the core. But it also has the interrupt controller, the system timer, and a proprietary DMA controller built in, as well as the clock and the I.O. Uh, memory rewrite decoding. I don't ever use the DMA controller because it's not the same as the 8237. There, now, there was a later model of the V40 that came with that. But it's hit and miss, and so I've never bothered wiring it up. But anyway, uh, so V40's here, and then I've got my memory here. I've got my address latches and my data transceiver across the top, my decoding for my memory. Got a 512K chip here, a 128K chip here to make 640 altogether, and then a 64K ROM. And I put it in a zip socket on this board because this board is kind of meant to be more of a development board, a uh, prototyping type board. And then I also put an extra slot here. It's a 32 pin, but it only accesses 64K. So the upper address pins are just connected to ground, but it's at address uh, E0000. And you can put in either an upper memory. Um, there's a disk on a chip I plugged in there. Haven't got it to work yet, but anyway. So the idea with this is I wanted to have a compact board that had the minimum needed to boot a system, but not necessarily a complete computer. And as I said in my last video, I've been wanting to do this for a while, but I decided to go along with the same theme of my modular project so that you can still use this with my project. But let me demo what this is really for, and then we'll also demo it on the project. So what I did was I made an ISA to breadboard adapter here. It's all plugged in. Um, and it's got my extra 16-pin uh, slot at the bottom. Um, there's some resistor arrays, capacitors on here. And what they do, uh, this res resistor array here, it's connected to ground, uh, holds the non-maskable interrupt pin, which is in the bottom corner here. And it holds the uh, hold pin down as well, which I want to say is the third pin down. The rest on this board, well, the rest on the left side are disconnected except, well, IRQ1 is the top corner here. Um, on my website, you can get the pin out for this. Um, so IRQ1 is connected to the, um, to the card and the non-maskable interrupt is connected. And so that's pulled down and your hold and hold acknowledge and on this i actually put the label so you can see what they are but there's also the uh let's see so there's the ready the reset they're all in here then at the top the other resistor this is a pull-up resistor and it goes to the io read io write uh memory read memory write uh the ready and uh let me look at my computer here see if i've got what else it's on uh, the reset and so the reset is up and using the resistor for the logic to uh, 
kind of give it a, a micro delay when you first power it up. So that's just a reset. And then I put a USB-C power connector on the board and a push button switch. Same switch as on my motherboards, kind of using what parts I have on hand. So the idea is that you can just plug in the card. And so on the card, like I said, it's got the built-in um, interrupt controller and the system timer. So you've got your interrupts available and you've got your uh, address and data bus available as well as some of the timer, it's down here, you got your speaker, basically your speaker is available. So you don't have to use it for a speaker, you could use it for other things, but that's the available things. So let me power it up, let's see if it works. I've got the, yep, so it's working. Um, it's just counting up on the lights there. So the idea is that you could uh, do a little prototyping on the, the breadboard here, but you don't have to wire up a whole 8088 uh, system and this gives you more space because this is a uh, vertical and off to the side there so anyway um, I may go ahead and do an 8088 version of this uh, the the modifications that I would have to do differently is uh, I'd, I'd have to add the interrupt controller in the system timer obviously and the thing is, there's not decoding on the uh, ISA uh, adapter here. So I'd have to include the decoding on the board, most likely, which when I plug it into my main board, um, you'd be double decoding, which kind of adds more chips, more cost. So it's not impossible. It's just, it's just more of that cost factor. Um, so speaking of that, uh, none of the... Uh, chip select pins, which are on the, the tell slot here, are pulled up or pulled down. So, and, it, and they're not connected on the B40 anyway. So, but yeah, so if I wanted the 8088, um, there'd be some other considerations to make. The B40 is definitely the most compact way to go. And the advantage is you do have 186 opcodes available on the B40, but 8088 is more authentic. Let's, uh, I'll turn this off here and I'll demo it in the PC. So the zip socket, you can just change out your uh, ROM just like so. Now, if you can see it in the camera, I did have to, and I knew this when I designed it, let's focus on it. I bent it up, uh, you could cut it off, uh, but I wanted to keep the board kind of compact. But I knew when I designed it that they would, they would uh, potentially hit each other but just intended just to bend it up. So let's turn the camera here. So this is just my seven slot. Uh, it's got a DMA controller in it right now. Um, the first attempt, the DMA controller, when it was plugged in, would not even work. And so I left it in there just to show that, yes, it is working. I haven't tried this with the key. Um, DMA using a floppy drive yet, but I'm pretty confident it'll work because so far there hasn't been any issues with it in the PC. And then one advantage is where this goes with the, the modular PC project, you can go ahead and take the four slot board and it'll give you two vacant slots because the memory is now on the processor card, which would allow you to put on a uh, uh, network card and a serial card. Uh, the DMA still would be missing on the four slot, but uh, maybe in the future I'll build one of these that has the built-in 8237 DMA controller as well. So. Anyway, uh, thanks for checking out my video today and feel free to check out any other videos.